Hi, I'm Lou and this is Lily Rowe and today we're out and about looking for beech trees or Fagus sylvatica if you want to get all scientific about it and we're going to be looking at how to identify them in winter time and we're going to use the SOBS acronym which I explain more in my introduction to winter tree ID video I'll put the link in the description below but basically SOBS stands for Silhouette, outer bark, buds and twigs, and site and habitat. So those are the features we're going to be looking at for the beech tree. Also, at the end, we will share some properties, uses, and folklore about the beech tree, which might be of interest and useful for forest school programs. So let's go and see what we can find. So starting with the silhouette, beech trees tend to grow into very large, very tall, big trunked trees. Um, they can dominate a woodland, so you might come into a, a whole area of beech trees within a woodland, or they might be standalone trees as well. They tend to have very long reaching branches, but in some ways are very delicate. So they're kind of very thin for their length. And they also tend to hold their branches right out at 90 degrees from the trunk. So really long spreading branches. The outer bark of the trunk tends to be a silvery gray color. However, it can be, oh, buzzard. Buzzard just landed in the field. Hmm. Looking for worms. Now another one's joined it. Two buzzards. One in a tree, one on the ground. It's very exciting. Well, both the buzzards are still there, but I don't mind an audience, so um, we'll carry on. Um, the outer bark on the main trunk of the beach tends to be a silvery grey colour. Sometimes it can look a bit greenish. Um, that's not the actual bark, that's things growing on the bark like algae and lichens and liverworts. So when you're looking at bark colour of a tree, do kind of really get up close and maybe even rub the bark so that you see the actual colour, the true colour of the bark. Big trunks of beech also tend to start wrinkling um, and they sometimes have like bobbles and things on them as well. I've heard them described a bit like elephant skin, which I love as an analogy. Um, so grey, wrinkly skin, if you like, on the trunk for the outer bark. So then looking at the buds and twigs, which are the best indicator of species when you're looking at trees in winter, the buds are an alternate arrangement. Um, in fact, in some twigs, they actually zigzag. So they're very obvious alternate. The buds themselves are a kind of reddish brown color and they're very long and thin, um, often described as cigar shaped. If you look closely at the bud scales, you can see that they're large. They're quite obvious scales comparatively. They're large, kind of coppery coloured sometimes and often with whitish tips at the, at the tip of the scale. The bark of the twigs are also reddish brown, similar to the bud colours, and you will often see pale spots, that, that's the lenticels, the pale lenticels on the twigs themselves. Beech is a species that sometimes holds on to its dead leaves through the winter, particularly on young growth, and this has got a term called, <sighs> I don't know how to say it. Marcescence? Marcescence? Marcescence, I think. 
beech is a species that sometimes holds on to its dead leaves all throughout winter and that happens particularly on young shoots, new growth. So you would often see that particularly in a beech hedge where it's been cut on a regular basis. So lastly, thinking about site and habitat, Beech trees are only really truly native to southeast England and southeast Wales, so very much a southern tree. Um, you won't find them if you travel further north. Uh, where I live in Norfolk, we have got beech trees, as you can see, um, but in my experience, I find they tend to always be quite sickly and prone to fungal attack. So I wonder if we're still a bit too far north for its natural range to be comfortable. They favour free draining soil and particularly on chalk or limestone. You can also find them in hedgerows and they are also planted in people's gardens um, to make a nice hedgerow as well. You can get a copper beech variegation of it as well which people like because of the nice purple colour of the leaves. Another clue to look for when you're looking at trees in winter is to look downwards under your feet and see if there are any clues on the ground such as obviously the leaves from last year might help and we can see down here that we have got some nice oval beech leaves but you also might find the fruits and if I look down here I can find some of the beech mast that has uh, dropped in the autumn. So the fruits of the beech tree are a three-sided nut sort of triangular in profile that's carried within a four-lobed spiky round case and that's known as mast so this is the beech mast. So we've covered all of the beech tree ID points um, I just wanted to mention there is a species that potentially you could confuse for beech and that's hornbeam, particularly in the winter time when there aren't any leaves. Um, so the main differences are hornbeam's buds also are kind of a brownish colour. Sometimes they can be more greeny though um, and they are kind of slender. They're not usually quite as long as beech buds. Um, they're usually a little bit shorter um, but one of the main differences is that their buds are adpressed and what that means is that the bud lies flat against the stem or kind of curls in towards the stem rather than sticking out which beech buds always stick out from the stem and hornbeam buds lie flat or are adpressed. Also there's a difference with the bark as well. Um, hornbeam bark is sort of a grey colour like beech and it is kind of smooth also like beech. However hornbeam quite quickly um, develops like striations, kind of like stripes or swirls that sort of a silvery, almost like a snake skin kind of pattern. So that's a difference as well to look for. Beach woodland can be quite shady places because they have such long spreading branches and their leaves are very well designed to pick up all the sunlight. Um, not much light gets to the forest floor so not many species can tolerate such shady conditions. However, those that can tolerate it are often quite rare or less, less common at least. So um, certain species of orchid, red helleborine, uh, for example, will kind of grow in, in beech woodland. Also, because their bark has lots of crevices and often develops holes, and, and certainly where I live, I mentioned that they tend to be a bit sickly and so there tends to be sort of rotted areas. Um, that's great habitat. Dead wood is great habitat for all sorts of invertebrate species, all the bugs and beasties, um, as well as uh, fungal species, lichens, liverworts, all sorts of species rely on deadwood and particularly standing deadwood. Some of the rarest species uh, in the UK rely on standing deadwood. So that's of value to wildlife. So I wanted to round off by sharing some of the properties and uses and folklore of the beech tree. The wood itself is very hard and dense. It's a beautiful kind of pinky orange colour. Um, but it's quite hard to split. So if you were using it for carving purposes, probably best left for more advanced tool users, or at least those with more strength and stamina to be able to work it. Certainly work it green when you're carving with it. 
um, it also because it's quite tricky to split that would make it a good choice for say mallet heads um, and also for chopping blocks if you're using tree stumps or blocks for cutting down onto for knife work for example it would be a good choice for that traditionally beech wood was used for furniture and also for butcher's blocks and treen which is a fancy term just meaning utensils so things like wooden spoons and spatulas the wood is actually antimicrobial so that gives an added benefit for making eating utensils from as the wood is hard and dense when it's well seasoned it makes a lovely firewood um, particularly for the later stages of a fire where you want the heat to build and keep a nice bed of embers so it's a really good firewood to use if you're into foraging the young beech leaves are edible and can be eaten raw but it's important to get them quite early on when they first come out in the spring so that they're soft and delicate um, if you leave them too long the um, cellulose builds up in them and they become not poisonous or anything they're just unedible uh, as in there won't be any nutritional benefit to eating them because you'd have to work so hard to break down the cellulose in them Historically, I also believe that the mast, the, the little nutlets, have been used as a food um, and you can extract like an oil from them. Um, and traditionally, they were used to feed pigs when people would let their pigs out into the woodland for pannage, it was called. So that was kind of an important food source for the pigs. <laughs> Another reason why we at Forest School might want to know where beech trees are is for safety reasons. So beech is a tree that is particularly known to have sudden limb drop, which is where a tree sheds a seemingly healthy limb, not a dead one, it's still got leaves on and everything, it just drops a limb without any warning. And so of course, it perhaps is best not to build any shelters to sleep in or to play in or your campfire area where your seating is under beech trees because of that possible hazard. Um, I, I, as I understand it, no one kind of really knows why trees do this sudden limb drop, but some people think it's to do with low moisture content because it happens often in dry spells during the summer months. So don't linger under any beech trees for too long. Then in terms of folklore, um, because of its delicate branches, um, beech trees are considered sort of feminine in terms of their energy. And um, because they get so big, it's often referred to as the mother of the woods, which I like the idea of, you know, when it's holding its space with its big branches. There's also the connection between beech trees and the written word. So for hundreds, if not thousands of years, I'm sure people have been carving into the bark because it's so smooth and um, you often see lovers' marks on beech trees, which apparently, according to the custom, if you carve your name and your loved one's name on the tree, as the bark grows, so will your love, which is very sweet. Nice one for a Valentine's Day, that one. Um, but also, um, the Anglo-Saxon word for beach is bok, B-O-K, and that's the root of the word book. And apparently this is because uh, long before there was paper, people used to write by carving into thin slices of wood. And the wood that they chose to carve into was beech wood. And so one of the first books, which was these thin slithers of wood bound together, um, was made out of beech trees. So there's a connection there to the written word. So from a, for a school point of view, maybe you want to kind of draw some inspiration um, from the beech tree and maybe share some ideas like that to the children or to the people you're working with. And maybe that will inspire them to look around and find some bark. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not condoning carving into the bark of living trees, but you know, find some dead bark perhaps on the ground and um, maybe that could be a place for learners to draw or to mark make or to write their wishes in perhaps or something like that um, and leave it, cast it out into the woodland and maybe as it rots down so will your kind of wish be integrated into the world. <laughs> There's lots of things I'm sure you could do with the beech tree at Forest School. So now you know what to look for Next time you're out on a woodland wander, do keep an eye out for the beautiful beech trees. 
Do you have a favourite activity to do with beach at Forest School? Do let me know in the comments section below. If you've enjoyed this video and want to learn about other trees, I'll put a link to the other videos in this winter tree series down in the description below. Do also consider giving us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you can join us in the woods again next time. And thanks for watching. Beach has long thin buds like a cigar. Mother of the woods, her branches reach far. Smooth grey bark with mast for seeds and in microbial woods we give thanks beech trees. <laughs>